Hey friends. So today we're going to deal with applications. As I said uh, at the end of the last lesson, applications are just a fancy way of saying word problems, really. Um, so we're going to be reading a scenario and we're going to think about what sort of question am I being asked and how do I get there? How do I answer the question? What tools do I have to answer the question, whether it be algebraic tools or whether it be calculator technology skills? Um, yeah. And so we're going to go through mm, three or four questions. Um, the first one's going to be kind of a long one because what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions uh, from the same scenario just to review um, how to know when, when the question what the question's saying, how to know what it's asking you for, okay? Um, okay, so here's the first scenario that we want to do. A rock is thrown off a bridge into a river below. I'm just going to hide my face for a second. Uh, the path of the rock can be modeled by the equation h of t equals negative t squared plus 2t plus 8, where t is the time in seconds and h the height uh, in meters above the river. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and if you're following along with your workbook, you have a table of a bunch of different questions that I could ask with this scenario. Um, we're going to go question by question, and we're going to figure out how to answer it. But before we do that, let's actually put this in our graphing calculator and get a decent picture of it. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to my graphing calculator, um, and we'll review this together. Just a rem um, reminder, we'll go menu five for Casio if you're a new model, menu three if you're an older model. Uh, either way, it should say graph on the icon. And then for TI, you'll press Y equals. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and type that first equation in, which is negative X squared uh, plus 2X and plus 8. Okay. Now, I have a second equation in there. I'm just going to turn that off. You can select or unselect a graph just by pressing select F1. You see how that's not um, the equal sign isn't highlighted anymore? Um, so now, even though it's sitting there, it's actually not going to be graphed, okay? TIs, you can do the same thing if you uh, just left arrow over to your equal sign and then hit enter on your equal sign. It should turn it off and on. Okay, so we're going to draw. Now, I actually have a decent picture of that now. Um, my window settings were already set up, but just to help you out, my window settings went from negative three to five. Okay, so X min was negative three, X max was five, Y min was negative one, and Y max is about 10. Okay. Okay, so that's what my graph should look like. And now I'm going to switch back to the PowerPoint and we're just going to take a look at some scenarios that we can ask that go along with that, okay? Okay, so the first one, what is the height of a bridge from wh which the rock is thrown? Well, what is the height of a bridge from which the rock is thrown? I'll just hide myself so you can see the question there. Okay, so what we're really looking for is this guy right here, okay? This is that time zero. This is where I would have released the rock. Okay, so that would signify how high up I am when the rock is released. Okay, so that would be the height of the bridge. So it's the y-intercept. Uh, to find it on a Casio, you would go um, G-solve and then y-intercept. Or on a TI or Casio, you could go trace zero. So I'll quickly do that with you. I'm just going to go back to my um, graph. So we could go G-solve, y-intercept, which is H4, and get to 0, 08. Or uh, on both Casio or TI, you could go trace. Uh, TI kids, your trace button is over here somewhere, but trace and then hit zero. So we're saying find me the value of y when x is zero and hit enter and it will take you to zero eight. Or you could just do it algebraically and plug in zero for your x value uh, and solve for your y value. So um, the characteristics that we were looking for is the height, the y-intercept, okay? And then to find that, we would go, Casio would go F5, F4, uh, TI would go trace, comma, zero. And then the answer here would be eight meters. Even though we were looking for a y-intercept, um, 
we're not writing it as a coordinate point because we're actually asking the the question or we're answering the question in the context okay so in context of what we were being asked we're not looking for a coordinate point we're looking for the height okay all right next one what is the maximum height of the rock okay so for the maximum height of the rock we would be looking at the y value at this point okay the y value of this point so to get a maximum i'm going to switch back over to my calculator for you um there we go so to get a maximum on a casio you'll go g solve and max okay and it'll take you to one comma nine if you are ti you will go second trace max okay and when you go second trace max your cursor will start blinking and it'll ask you left bound so you just have to move your cursor so that you're left of the hump hit enter right bound you'll have to move your cursor so that you're right of the hump hit enter and then you can hit enter one more time through the guess okay now that gave me a point of one comma nine one would be how long it took to reach the maximum but that's not the answer here the nine is uh the answer because it says what's the maximum height okay so the characteristic would be the y value with maximum point to get it from a casio you'd go f5 f2 ti would go second trace four and my answer would be nine meters okay okay the time at which the rock hits the water well that's this circle down here okay we can follow the path of the of the rock all the way down to where it hits the water right here is where it hits the water that's a route or an x-intercept okay now to get the x-intercepts on your calculator we'll just quickly go back to your calculator lots of going back and forth on this one uh that would be a g solve and then root on a casio okay now it's going to take you here first it'll take you to the one on the left you just hit the right button and it will jump over to the one on the right for you so you've got four comma zero if you are a ti the easiest thing to do there is to go y2 is zero okay and then if you just graph that what you you won't notice anything on on your calculator but what happens is a line went on top of um your x-axis so now what you would do is get the intersection of these two lines so you go second trace five and then move your cursor close to the one you want so i'm just going to move my cursor close to here and then hit enter 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 okay and that should get you to the same spot on your ti so the characteristic is the x-intercept that's on the right. I don't actually care about the x-intercept that's on the left. It's actually meaningless in the context, that particular x-intercept. Um, so Casio, you're going to go F5, F1. TI, you'll put Y2 is 0 and go second trace 5. And then the answer you should get, whether you're Casio or TI, should be 4 seconds. Okay? Awesome. Okay, at which time sorry the time at which i can't talk today the time at which the rock is seven meters above the water okay so seven meters is right about here so you're looking for that point right there essentially you have been given a y value and you are asked for an x value okay now i'm going to switch over to um the calculator for a second if you are looking for an X value from a Y value, if you're a Casio, you can go G solve and then just go to more options here, F6. And then you actually wanna use now the X calc feature, okay? So that's F2 and it'll say, okay. Now mine is flashing because I have this other uh, equation there. You wouldn't have that, so it won't be flashing right now. It's just asking me which one um, I wanna use. So I do wanna use that one. And then it says enter Y value. Okay, so I want to enter a value of seven because that's the Y value that I know. And then it will take me to the X value that matches that. Now, again, it'll go to the one on the left. Um, this particular one is meaningless in the context. So we just go right click over so that we're in a meaningful context. And we can see there that it's 2.41 seconds. Okay, so at 2.41 seconds, the height of the rock will be seven meters. Okay, now, the other way you can do that is if you're a TI, I mean, you can do this with the Casio too, but if you're a TI, you could go Y2 is seven, okay? 
and then graph that intersection point, just like we did with y2 being zero. Okay, so go second trace five, move your cursor over here and hit enter, enter, enter. Okay, so it's the x value when y is seven. Casio will go F5, then F6 to more options, then F2. And then the TI, we put Y2 as 7 and go second trace 5. And no matter who you are, you should get an answer of 2.41 seconds. Okay. Everybody doing okay? Okay, what are the restrictions on the domain? This is an important question because so far, everything we've done uh, with quadratic graphs, I've kept saying, hey, the domain is real, the domain is real. Well, mathematically, the domain is real, but contextually, we only care about the domain when it's meaningful, okay? So for instance, when I look at this one here, negative one is not meaningful. I can't go back in time, okay? Time doesn't start until the rock gets thrown, and the rock gets thrown at time zero. Okay, so nothing back here is actually meaningful in the context of the question. As well, once the rock has hit the water, the rest of this is kind of meaningless because it's gone. The rock's gone. I don't see it anymore. Um, nothing that happens down here matters. Okay, so actually, we are only looking at a meaningful domain with this line that I've, I've made glow. Okay, it would go from here to here. So we would say actually, the domain of this graph in context would be zero to four. So we say all the values of x such that zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to four, and x is a member of the reals. Okay, likewise, uh, what are the restrictions on the range? Well, I only care about the distance from the water to the highest point it goes, okay? I'm not watching this rock dig a hole or anything. So once it hits the water, it's done. So my meaningful context for the range would be from here to here where I put this blue line, okay? And so that would be all the values of y such that zero is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to nine. That was my highest point. And again, y is a member of the reals, okay? How long is the rock above 8.5 meters? Okay, so um, what we're looking for here is we can see that 8.5 would be somewhere around here, okay? So at this point here, the rock begins to be above 8.5 meters. And then at this point here, the rock stops being above 8.5 meters. So we actually need both of those points and we need to subtract them. That would give us the length of time it was above 8.5 meters, okay? So we need this point here and this point here. Now the y value is 8.5. If you're a Casio, you can do an x calc. So you could go that uh, g solve more options x calc. Or uh, if you're a TI or Casio can do this too, you could go y2 is 8.5 and find the x values of both of those um, spots. Find the x value, and then you're going to subtract the two of them, okay? Go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do that one with you. Okay, and the answer you should have is the one on the right should have been 1.7071, and the one on the left should have been 0 0.2929, and then when I subtract them, I'm left with 1.41 seconds. So the rock was 8.5 meters in the air for 1.41 seconds, okay? All right, now I'm hoping this page, this table that you see in your workbook helped just kind of solidify the types of questions we can ask and then how to go about getting them. One of the things I always want you to ask yourself though is, is be very conscious of, have I been given an X value and asked to solve for Y or have I been given a Y value and asked to solve for X, okay? Okay, we're gonna do another one now. Um, the underside of a concrete underpass forms a parabolic arch. The arch is 30 meters wide at the base and 10.8 meters high in the center. What would be the headroom at the edge of a sidewalk that starts 1.8 meters from the base of the underpass? Okay, so what we're doing here, I'm just going to get my ink flowing here for a sec, just one sec. Okay, so essentially we're saying, hey, 
this is going to be 30 meters. Uh, and so that means if that's 30 meters and it's a parabolic arch, this would be 15 right here, right? So I know right away that's the point, 15, 10.8. Okay. Uh, and then I would need one other point. Remember yesterday uh, we were building equations. I have the vertex, right? The, the actual graph is going to look like this. Can I do that? Hey, that's not bad. Okay, and the other thing, just to make sure you realize what I'm doing, is I'm superimposing this onto a grid, right? So I'm saying I'm going to make my origin right there. So that's why I can call this point here 15, uh, comma 10.8, because I know that the whole width was 30. Okay, so likewise, I could call this point here 30, comma 0 right? Because I haven't moved up or down and the whole base was 30. Okay. That's enough information to figure out um, an equation for the parabola. And then I say, hey, okay, a sidewalk starts 1.8 meters in and I want to know the height right there. Okay. Now let's look at that in uh, without the picture. I'm going to take the picture away and just look at that graph. Okay. But hopefully that makes sense as to what you're visualizing there. Okay. And so this is what we would be looking at, okay? I've got this arch, and I know this point here was 30 comma zero. I know up here I had 15 comma 10.8. Um, and then I'm looking for the height when this X value is 1.8. So this is the last thing we'll do. We'll get to that guy in one sec, okay? All right, so I start with my equation in vertex form. I know that H is 15, K is 10.8, I'm going to use this as my x and y to plug in and solve for a, okay? So I plug 0 in for y, 30 in for x, 15 in for h, and 10.8 in for my k. Go ahead and solve for a. I'm going to subtract 10.8 from both sides. 30 minus 15 is 15. 15 squared is 225. Now I'll divide both sides by 225, and I'm just going to put that as a fraction right away. Okay, so I'm going to go 10.8 divided by 225 and then tell my calculator to put it as a fraction. If you're a Casio, that's your F to D or S to D button. If you're a TI, that's your math enter enter button. Okay, you should get negative 6 over 125 equals A. So my equation is Y equals negative 6 over 125 bracket X minus 15 all squared uh, plus 10.8. Now I have an X value. I'm going to plug that in for this x value here and get out my height that way. Okay, so I'm just going to hide my face for just a minute so that you can see. I've plugged in the 1.8, and then I do the math and end up with y equals 2.44. Okay, I just typed all that into my calculator. So now I'm going to conclude. Very important that you're concluding when you have a word problem. Okay, the height of the sidewalk would be 2.44 meters. Height of the sidewalk would be 2.44 meters. Okay, awesome. Okay, so these last two examples that we're going to walk through together are very similar to each other, and they're kind of a famous um, sort of maximum minimum problem with quadratics that we do, and they're called revenue questions, okay? So let's just read through this example first, and then I'll kind of unpack it for you. Kelly sells sugar-coated mini donuts at a carnival for $6 a bag. Each day, she sells approximately 200 bags. Based on customer surveys, she knows that she will sell 20 more bags per day for each 30 cent decrease in price. What is the maximum daily revenue that Kelly can achieve from donut sales? And what is the price per bag for this maximum revenue? Okay. Now, there is a lot to unpack here. Don't stress too, too much. We're going to go step by step here. The first thing you need to understand is revenue. Reven revenue is the amount of money coming in. And we calculate it by taking the cost times the population. Okay, so um, I'll just add that up to my little notes here. So for this one, it would have started at a cost of $6 a bag. and um, the population would have been 200 bags. That's before we start adjusting the price. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to call x, we're going to call our variable the amount of price adjustments that I make. Okay, so now think about this. If I start at $6 and I'm going to decrease the price, it says there's going to be a 30 cent decrease in price. So if I decrease it once, I will bring the price down by 30 cents. So I'll subtract 30 cents. If I decrease it twice, I'll bring the, the price down uh, two times 30 cents. If I decrease the price three times, I'll bring the price down three times 30 cents. So if I decrease the price X times, I would bring down the price 0.30X, 30 cents times X, okay? But now on the other side of that, I can do the same thing with the 200 figs. I start with 200 figs, but then I'm gonna sell more every time I make a price adjustment. So if I make one price adjustment, I'll sell 20 more bags. If I make two price adjustments, I'll sell 20 times two more bags. If I make three price adjustments, I'll sell 20 times three more uh, bags, okay? So what we end up with is, something that looks like this, okay? Now, I'm just gonna hide my head there for a sec so you can see that revenue cost times population. Okay, I talked about it, but I just wanna make sure you have it down that you can see it. Okay, so I have six minus 0.3x and then 200 plus 20x. Now, where does my maximum of a quadratic happen? It happens at the vertex. Well, how do I get to a vertex? Well, I could find the x-intercepts and take the average of the x-intercepts and that would give me my axis of symmetry, right? We've talked about that in previous lessons. So, hey, what if I made my revenue zero? I am already in factored form. I have the zero product principle. I have a number times a number equals zero. So I could just set each one of these factors equal to zero and solve. Okay, so if zero equals six minus 0.3x, um, I can bring my negative 0.3x over to the other side and then divide both sides by 0.3x and I get x is 20. And then uh, if zero equals 200 plus 20x, I can bring my 200 over, divide by 20 and I get x equals negative 10. Now this has nothing to do with the answer. These are my x-intercepts. But the reason I could use my x-intercepts is because now I could get my axis of symmetry. And my axis of symmetry is the x value uh, that goes with the vertex. And I need the y value that goes with the vertex, right? Okay, so the axis of symmetry can be found by taking the average 20 plus negative 10 all over 2. That's going to give me 5, right? 20 plus negative 10 is 10, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So now I know my x value, the number of price adjustments, has to be uh, 5. Now, if the question said, what's the maximum revenue? I could now plug the 5 back into the equation and get out the y value, right? Okay, so I'm going to do exactly that. I'll plug 5 back into the equation, okay? And then that's going to give me 4.5 times 300 and that gives me 1350. Okay, so now to answer all of those questions together, I say Kelly can achieve a maximum revenue of $1,350 a day by selling the bags of donuts at $450 a bag. And the, the other thing we find out here is she would be selling $300 a day as well. That would be the other piece of that. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, let's do it again. Very similar. Okay, Melanie's saltwater candy booth is beside Kelly's mini donut stand at the carnival. Melanie has determined that if she decreases the price of her candy by 0 0.25, so 25 cents a bag, she will sell 25 more bags each day. Melanie currently sells 300 bags at 550 a bag. How much should she charge to generate the maximum revenue per day? Okay, so again, we start the exact same way. We know that revenue is cost times population. Again, I'm just gonna hide myself so you see that. And then we're gonna let X equal the number of price adjustments. So this time the price starts at 550 and I'm decreasing by 0 0.25 uh, dollars per bag. So that's gonna be 550 minus 0 0.25 X, right? Because every time I make a price adjustment, it will go down 
by 25 cents. The bags will go up, so I'll start at 300 and I'll add 25 times X for the amount of uh, price adjustments I'm making. Okay, so I've got 5.5 minus 0.25X and that's being multiplied by 300 plus 25X. Same setup that I did last time. I'm gonna set my revenue equal to zero because that allows me right away to use a zero product principle, solve for my x-intercepts, and I can take the average of that. So each one of these could be my zero. So I set each one to zero, 5.5 .5 minus 0.25x equals zero, or 300 plus 25x equals zero. Okay, now solving. So I'm going to add 0.25x to both sides and then divide by 0.25 and I get 22. For the other factor that equals zero, I could subtract the 300 and then divide by 25 and I would get negative 12. So again, I want my axis of symmetry, um, which will be the average of these two numbers. So negative 12 plus 22 and then divide by 2. Negative 12 plus 22 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So again, this one I'm going to make five price adjustments in order to achieve the maximum revenue. Now, the questions that we were asked was what price should she charge? We're gonna go back here to, this is the price, right? So if I plug in five for X there, that will answer the question for me, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in that five and I get 425. So she should charge 425 per bag to earn the maximum revenue. Okay, so you wanna do lots and lots of practice on these ones. They will get better as you go. You'll feel more comfortable with them as you go, okay? Um, as always though, make sure you're asking me lots of questions too. Uh, so if you're my kid at school, here is your homework that goes with this. Um, give yourself lots of practice time. Make sure you're checking your answers and make sure you're talking to me too and letting me know how you're feeling, okay? Um, all right, so that's it for now. Um, after this, um, we are going to start solving quadratic equations. So the next lesson I see you for will be on solving quadratic equations by graphing. Okay. All right. We'll see you then. Take care, you guys. You got this. Bye-bye.